Hello. Okay, so uh, this is my project and uh, I worked with uh, Professor Guido Germano and also my supervisor at Quantbot Technologies where I did my internship, uh, Tuang Lam. Uh, oh, and to introduce my project as well. So um, I use machine learning methods uh, to predict uh, daily realized volatility. So this was part of my uh, master's in computational finance project. And um, I specifically focused as a variable on the 21 day averaged realized volatility. So uh, just to give a brief definition, that was uh, the sum of returns over the 21 day period uh, square rooted as well. And um, this, these methods are an alternative to conventional approaches like time series volatility models, uh, which are autoregressive models like GARCH or uh, linear realized volatility models, which uh, involve, for example, predicting um, monthly realized volatility from daily data. And um, the issue with these approaches is often poor out of sample performance. So that is what this project is aiming to improve. Uh, so uh, the original uh, paper I based my project on was uh, this one, so Filipovich and Kalizadeh in 2021, and they used a gigantic data set of 53 years and um, from 1964, and it was uh, monthly frequency data with some features being uh, calculated on an annual basis, and 54 features in total, so a very massive data set, and they were predicting the monthly uh, volatility. And they used elastic net, uh, gradient boosted regression tree models, feed forward neural network, and a uh, long short term memory neural network. Out of these, they found the best performance in LSTM uh, with an R squared score of 80 to 83%. Um, particularly, uh, elastic net didn't work very well, and um, GBRT and feed forward had similar performances. And my method uh, as a change from this paper was to use daily frequency data. Uh, for all indicators. I did have some indicators which would not update on a daily basis. So um, that was also similar to the paper, but um, the actual frequency of most indicators was daily. And I used 10 years of data. So from 2004 to 2013. Uh, this data set specifically does cover the 2008 crash. And that was significant in the paper I was working from because uh, the models, uh, like the linear realized volatility models that were tested in that paper, um, they didn't perform well specifically in that period. So uh, having this period also in my testing uh, is a kind of a good judgment of if this method actually improved um, the performance or not. I used uh, 1,000 US stocks, uh, the top by market cap, and I did some data processing as well. So that involved standardizing. I did remove outliers by taking the off the first percentile and the um, 199th to 100 percentile of the data, and uh, also did some feature uh, selection because some features were, were ve very highly correlated. So I just ch um, chose to keep one of those instead of including all of them. And I investigated gradient boosted regression trees, light GBM, uh, which is just efficient gradient boosting. Um, which involves feature bundling and um, uh, some speed efficiency measures and the long short, uh, long short term memory network, uh, which has both feed forward and feedback connections, which was seen to perform the best in the previous paper. And I also investigated a bucketing approach, which was to split the data based on the median market volatility. So it wasn't an exactly equal split because I was using the whole market data, but uh, this would essentially group um, the data into high volatility and low volatility stocks. So then I would apply the models to those separately as well. And part of my results was investigating the feature importance. So the key benefit to these methods is that they identify features that aren't used in the previous um, nor, um, traditional methods. And some of, the um, some of the features that were identified as being quite important were, uh, this is using the mean decrease in impurity method. Uh, where, for example, treasury bill rate uh, obtained from the US Treasury uh, database, uh, overnight returns, total assets to size. So this is um, firm specific data, which is the total assets of the firm uh, divided by uh, the market cap. And um, also the median market volatility played a role and idiosyncratic volatility. And um, then in terms of actual performance, 
Uh, I did two different split methods. Uh, that's why there's uh, a lot of different data sets on the graph, on the table. But um, the best performance was actually achieved by light GBM in most cases. And this was, uh, in the best case scenario, 88.99% accuracy, which, um, which is an improvement from the previous paper and around a 5% gain. And, um, and this could be due to many features. For example, I did use daily data, so you would expect an increase in um, accuracy. I also did reduce the feature space, um, which made the model much more efficient to run. Um, still did use a lot of features though. And also light GBM was a model that wasn't being used. And this is a more efficient version of GBRT. So um, it was nice to see it work uh, quite well in this and actually beat LSTM. Um, I did do a lot of um, also optimization of the parameters uh, to, to achieve this score because without optimization, the performance was very similar to GBRT. And um, some conclusions from uh, my results were, uh, it, that it's more difficult to predict volatility and high volatility stocks. So the models that were just um, trained and tested on low volatility stocks uh, performed uh, better than high volatility stocks. And um, uh, another conclusion was also that um, the out of sample performance was better compared to autoregressive and stochastic approaches. Uh, this is compared in the Bucci paper. And uh, also benefit of these ML methods is that um, they do not need assumptions on the underlying data distribution. So, um, so it's quite an efficient way of uh, training on, on the data set. And um, external factors are also important. So this links back to the oops, feature importance. Uh, so external factors were identified to uh, increase performance and uh, training without the, um, training without the volatility features still had a score of 66% accuracy, which means uh, without using the actual lagged variable, 66% uh, accuracy was still achieved. So, um, so definitely those factors do uh, play a role and these could reveal underlying um, properties of volatility. So, uh, so that was really interesting to see. Now, um, Obviously this approach can definitely be improved with more aggressive feature selection. 36 features were used. So uh, using less, keeping only the really relevant ones would be very good. And also uh, optimizing hyperparameters better. Also there have been models which are also applied to similar cases. For example, the NARCS model. So nonlinear autoaggressive exogenous model. And this has been applied in a univariate case. So basically uh, using the variable uh, that is trying to be predicted and also one more feature, but uh, it could be extended to having many features as well. And that's an interesting approach. Um, there have been various hybrid model approaches. So using, implementing, for example, one model and then uh, training uh, a second model based on the residuals of the first. Uh, so that has been done as well. And um, also adding additional features. So there's a huge potential to add, for example, uh, investment sentiment in the form of semantic uh, web screen data or volatility indices as well. And um, also combined prediction approach with relevant option prices would be interesting because the option prices do, um, uh, do correlate with uh, the underlying asset. I did investigate this a little bit in my results. So um, that's the second column here. And um, but the, there was still a huge mean square error with the um, implied volatility of option prices. So around 10%, 10 to 12%. Um, but that could be further investigated. Also grouping by industry has shown to have some interesting um, prediction properties. So bucketing related firms together as well, which was done in Huang uh, 2022. Um, this would be, for example, if a firm is a client of some other firm and they're, they have a more codependent relationship, that could also uh, reflect the volatility, uh, have an effect on the volatility of each. Yeah, that's me.